What is up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete strategy. I am Pete. I am a progressive specialist playing risk global domination on PC. Currently ranked 34 on the global leaderboard. I have a daily release schedule on YouTube. Fridays is fixed Fridays. We play a fixed game. Uh, Wednesdays is the podcast style interview show waiting on your best behavior. And every other day is whatever I feel like. If you are interested in getting better at the game of risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and come along this ride with me today. We are playing a community game on King Dynasty. In the first position we have Lithium Snake. Um, recently got in touch with this gentleman. Seems like a pretty cool guy. 170, 171 hours, 113 wins to 157 losses. In the second position, we have Klingzi flying the flag of Austria. And 280 hours with 30 wins to 104 losses. In the third position, we have Asylum the Crazy flying the flag of Antarctica. I hear this guy's a little nuts. Uh, 286 hours with 88 wins and 247 losses. Um, in the fourth position, we have Icorn, and Icorn is flying the flag of Germany with an almost even win to loss record in 43 hours. I'm in the fifth position, which I'm happy about. And in the final position, we have Surya Guganta. And that is Mr. Sunshine. Surya means sun in Hindi, as I once learned. 100 hours, even. 58 wins to 136 losses. And if everyone wants to take a quick peek at my record, here we are with 1,062 hours and 3,009 games played. I've been given a large exterior position in the north, in Xinjiang. What's this continent called in the map? Tartari. Okay. And a bunch of action in the southeast. So I'm going to go for the two position play, I think. Just throw hearts to all my opponents, because why not? So here's how the continents break down in Qing Dynasty. I don't want to cut that one south. I also want yellow the opportunity to get out of Hainan. How do I accomplish all of that in a single turn? Okay, I'm going to give yellow the road out of Hainan like that and hope they take it. Here's how the continents break down in Qing Dynasty. So you've uh, 3 for 2 for Tartari, 3 for 2 for Mongolia, 4 for 2 for Manchuria. But you can guard Manchuria from three positions because it has Sakhalin Island. Is it called Sakhalin on the on this map? It's called K Island. That must be what it's called in English. Um, the, the northern part of the Japanese archipelago that's owned by Russia. Um, then you have a middle territory, Shandong and Jili, which is three 4 for 4s. Tibet is a 4 for 3. Liangzhang, this massive territory, only worth plus 3. And Liangguang, worth plus 5. And that's actually good value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for 5, if you can hold it. So the continents are relevant in Qing Dynasty. Um, if you can hold a continent, it's <clears throat> not a bad idea to try. The, the map is very tight. It's um, 6, I think it's 36 territory, something like that. Less. 35 territories, I think. So it's it's very tight. There's not a lot of room to maneuver in progressive. Um, so you don't have to terribly worry about setting up your kills, but the downside, of course, is that you aren't really able to hide very effectively. Um, maybe because I'm playing against reasonably good opponents, I should look to set myself up for a three-position play instead of a two-position play. But it seems like my 5-stack and my 6-stack could consolidate. So then maybe the other way to think about it is I move through here, consolidate here, and then move my 4 into the southern position. So I'll have 1, 2, and 3 positions. And I think I like that better. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So you guys know, if you are familiar with my work on YouTube, I like having um, multiple positions separated from themselves. For, like, and, and lining that up for like the 
sixth, seventh, and eighth turn when you make the kills. Um, your job in progressive is to make kills. So that was his chance to get out of Hainan, and he failed. So now I have the monopoly on the kill on Lithium Snake. Um, and I'm probably going to sit there with a stack for the rest of the game. Yeah, the goal in progressive is to kill your opponents. So the cards matter a lot more than the board. The cards scale up in value uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, and then up by 5 from then on. Alliances are on, as you can see. So, yeah, you had your chance, though. You had your chance to put those two positions together, and you didn't take it. So now I lock you, right? Now I lock yellow into Hainan, and we'll see what happens in the rest. It, 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 it's, it's good and bad. Clinsey says, no, you can't hold Tibet. So, so far, no one's holding continent, despite the alliances being on. Okay, blue has a pretty decent three position game going as well. Also something to keep in mind, the Great Wall actually uh, is relevant, it's not just decorative. The Great Wall defends like a cap if you attack from north to south, so that means it rolls three dice instead of two. Do I want to let yellow out? Maybe. That is my easy take, I could make an easy take in that direction as well. I actually think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hold a southeast, a northwest and a central position on this board. So now by the end of the third turn, we have gravitated into three positions. And they are <coughs> strong and lined up to make kills in any direction. It makes me harder to kill for any one opponent, which is always the trick. You don't want to be able to be defeated by a single opponent so that they can kill you, eat their cards, match in, and then continue to be successful. Oh! Just think about rolling 19 on 6. Thinking about it. So, Surya's down to a single... Wow, and he does it. Okay. He's down to a single position, pretty much. That will make him... That will likely make him the fish. Green is likely the first player to die. So what I'm going to do on my next turn is I'm going to attack this one, and I'm going to not break... Um, and I'm going to throw him a heart, such that um, he thinks we're friends, and 100 hours this player is probably something like an intermediate rank, maybe an expert. So I know better than to go around breaking um, relatively lower ranked players' continents in the early game, because what, what ends up happening is you can piss them off and eat their big match in the late game. So Asylum has essentially three positions, but they're closer together than mine. Yeah, and he knocks off green. Yep. Okay. It's an easy take here. He, he pulls my move. Okay, Icorn takes what I would have done. Does he sit there or does he pull? He sits there. Okay. Interesting. I don't want to move this stack then. So then I'll go for a top, top, middle, and bottom play instead. And somehow I'm still preserving all of this territory. <laughs> well played if you say so. So I think I think what uh, what the green player is doing is whoa, roll nineteen on ten. Okay. Concerning. Yeah, <laughs> lithium snake says in the chat, green is insane. Lol. 
<laughs> yeah, well, sometimes. You see all types. Lithium snake in four positions. I have the five locked in Hydon. He has three mobile positions that he can make attacks from. And he'll be first to match. So now what's happening is we, at the end of the fifth turn, you hold five cards. You're guaranteed to match on five. So we're forced to match at the beginning of the sixth turn, assuming that nobody changes the order. I will get the second largest match, which I'm very happy with. I'd much rather get the 12 and the 15 over the four. I'm going to knock off this single as well. The only question is, do I let him out of high non? I think the answer is no. This is part of the game where I have to start thinking about who's the fish and making sure that I'm not. I try to ascertain who the fish is so I can make the kill. It looks like green is probably... Green's after me in the turn order, too. So I should probably set myself up to kill them. They are being allowed to recover a bit by holding that continent. Recover in terms of troops but they are currently the shortest stack, other than Asylum. Asylum's at 22, right? Okay, good. So blue breaks the continent. I'll take my... I don't want to make it too obvious that I'm hunting. But I think green is the fish, so I think I'm going to match and get the 12, be able to eat them on my next turn, and then get the 15 as well, which isn't great. Oh, he matches early. Never mind. Okay. Whole different story. Whole different story. Now what's happening? Now he kills Blue. Okay. Blue is going to be down to a single position, and I'm not lined up to kill Blue. Too bad. They also match in before me, so they're going to get the 10. Which means No, sorry. They're going to get the 12 now. I get the 15, because now I'm at the, la I'm at the end of the matching sequence. Can anyone kill Blue before I get the chance? Maybe Asylum, but it's not... Eh, it's possible, actually. So if Asylum gets that easy take, yeah, he'll get five cards. That could be really bad. <laughs> okay. If I was Asylum, I would try and kill Blue on my next turn. I would match in, get the ten, put it all here, and go bang, bang, bang. Get five more cards. Then he'd probably eat me. So that's how I might lose this game. And let's see if that's how this cookie crumbles. Lithium Snake takes a continent, threatens to break green as well, but doesn't actually do it. Okay. Never understood that, by the way. If you're going to threaten, it should be to send a message to say to your opponent, hey, I want you to do this action, not... I, mean, I could fuck you up, but I won't. <laughs> but that's just how I play. It's a stylistic choice, I guess. Okay, Clingsy puts in. Match point is 8, now 10. He's going to try and kill me. He's going to try and kill Asylum. This board is now ready to pop. So somebody dies, and that's going to have a domino effect. Okay. Can Asylum kill Blue? Let's see it. Nope. Not if you put a single troop there. Put it all on the six. Oh, never mind. There's a nine stack there I completely missed. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't think that one through, guys. Woo! That would be stupid. Okay. So everyone's still alive. Can I kill Green? Green's looking a little weak. Get two cards. No, it would cost me too much to get those two cards, I think. Unless Blue retaliates in anger, that will be cool to see. But he won't do it. He's not dumb.
Blue has a great three position play going. I have a joker. I'm going to make sure that I have it set up for next turn. Perfect. Okay, so I have a guaranteed max next turn because I'm holding a joker. Who's the fish? I think it's green. Someone have more cards. I'm going to sit in exactly the same position as I was in. Three central. 15 stacks. Ready to kill. I know I have a match lined up. Let's see who I can kill. And Green will be holding three cards. I have yet to piss them off. They're not guarding to bet at all. The big problem with killing Green is that you're going to spend, you have to push through 28 troops to not trade in turn. Let's see if anyone else makes my match point bigger. That might help. Okay, so Lithium Snake gives me a road to kill him. Except for that position. I can't get there very easily. Four cards are better than three, but 36 troops, a lot of troops, and the match point's only 20. So now I'm torn, right? Now the decision is I know I have a match on three. Do I choose to not spend it? Will I survive through the second, through some of the second matching sequence? Okay, match point's now 25. That might change my decision. If I put in an additional 25, I think that's enough to take out Lithium Snake. Just barely. I got four cards. We're going to go for it. 25? Okay, now I got the 30. Yeah, I have to kill y'all. Assuming Blue doesn't do it right now. Blue's killing green. Interesting. Blue's going to hold four cards. They might actually have less troops. No, but there's no way for me to get that. All right, so the first kill is made. Green was indeed the fish. Blue doesn't match in turn. I'm probably going to do the same thing, and it's probably going to kill me. See if I can survive. Okay. Only four cards. I have 58 troops on board. I don't think I'm about to die unless the blue player manages to do something about that. I want to free up my biggest army. I'm also good because my stacks are surrounded, so I'll be holding five cards. If someone can kill me, it's bad news baseball, but not Terra Asylum's laughing. Okay, cool. It's Klingsy put in. Klingsy able to kill me. Maybe. Maybe. And then I'll get the five. Then I'll match again. You can kill either me or Blue, to be honest. I don't think I can win this game from this position. Goes for blue. Cool. It's gonna punch through my 12 stack. Hmm. He can't though. He doesn't have enough troops. Alright. Asylum has a chance.
Yeah, I think me putting the 12 here to block off blue mattered. Here, the question is, if blue is a match on 4, does he go through my 12? And Oh, as long as I don't die. Blue has to kill me on his turn. Let's see if he can do it. If he doesn't have a match on 4, though, I win this game easy. Having your having reasonably large stacks at the ends makes it really hard for your opponents to have to split and get you. They have to do tough math. Okay, Asylum is consolidating in the center. Blue doesn't have a match on four, it's game. He does. Puts in the 40. Is the 40 enough to kill me? Maybe. It would be close. <laughs> Would indeed be close. He's going for it, nice. Asylum and keep rolling. I can, but I don't want to. Two thirty sacks. Run around me, guys. Hmm. <laughs> Blue says it was a misclick, so I said, oops, moment. Ooh, I got a match on three. It's like, sorry, Pete. <laughs> Clancy holding three cards with 73. I'm going to, if I kill anyone, I'm going to kill them and not match in turn. Um, at this point, is it is it wise to do so? The match point is 50. So I think it is. Like, if I kill somebody like the blue player, I'll be able to stabilize. I don't think either of them can kill me unless they have a lucky match. So that's how we're going to do it. Assuming blue gets a single card, I'll take out his 50 troops with my lucky match. And I'll be holding three again. That's how we'll do it. I still fucked up. I I don't know what it is. I can't see that island. I can't see that island. That's so funny. Well, it's going to be hard for any of them to get that. So 
That's funny. It's twice now. Twice now I missed that fucking island. <laughs> It's going to be a lot closer of a game. Next one of those guys to get a match can do me in. At least I have more troops. Maybe uh, Clingsy doesn't have a match on four, but he more likely does. I think I die. I think I die easily. That's too bad. Shouldn't have fucked up that kill. <laughs> oh well. Does he suicide into my stack? Or does he just sit there? See, this doesn't trigger a match either. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to split my positions into three. So I have a 28, a 26 in Sack Highland. I'm going to turn the 26 in Sack Highland to like a 15. Or, yeah, let's make them equal. Two 15 stacks, 14 in Sack Highland, 14 in High Non. So I'm in three corners of the map. It's going to be really tough for these guys to kill me. I'm holding five cards. Let's see if they can. Clingsy has the match. Does he go for me? I'm a juicy target, man, but Asylum is more juicy. And I think he'll get Asylum, and I think he'll match again, and then, it'll be, then we'll be at the 1v1, which is fine. I think if Klingsy kills Asylum now, triggers the match, match point is 60. Yeah, good game, guys, good game. Alright, so can he kill me? with just his trade. No, right? Because it's 60, match point, and I have 70 troops, and he locked his big army. He doesn't have quite enough juice to kill me. Now let's see if he moves his stack. Because I can leave that trapped there too. Where do you move it? Here? Oh, I got the back-to-back -back match. I think I win. So I take the whole board. Knowing that I have a match next turn. This is a great game. I'm glad, it, I'm glad me fucking up like that didn't uh, make me lose. I take the whole board and then I hit it. Okay, 25 troops left. If he doesn't have a match on three, it's not looking so good. I do. I probably win. And that's the game, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you found some of my thoughts on Qing Dynasty to be helpful. Um, and I hope that they improve your game. If you're interested in getting better at the game of Risk, I invite you to come along, subscribe to my channel. I have a daily release schedule. Fridays is Fixed Fridays. Wednesdays is the Podcast Talent Interview Show. And every other day is whatever I feel like. Got him. Better lucky than good, right? Alright, so we have a bunch of different ranks. So he's a beginner. The blue player and the yellow player were masters. Clingsy is an intermediate, and Asylum is a master. Okay. Until next time, for all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.